The rise of Gemini, Google's secret weapon to take on ChatGPT. Hey, so OpenAI created this super cool chatbot called ChatGPT. It's fire, and it outdid Google's Bard, which is the competitor in both ability and popularity. But having a red alert over at Google definitely did something to unify some of the competitive teams inside of the company. In fact, somewhat of an internal peace treaty has been achieved. The competitive AI research teams have now joined forces to compete with Microsoft. So Alphabet is a parent company, and it actually owns one company, which is called Google, you probably heard of it, but they also own DeepMind and Google Brain, two amazing research companies that basically do their own thing. But for the first time, they are all collaborating together on a new project called Gemini. This is gonna be a new chatbot which should take Bard to a new level. A Google AI researcher's shocking resignation and a chatbot controversy exposed. So a top Google AI researcher has now resigned. He sent a letter to the CEO Sundar Pichai about how he was uncomfortable about the fact that they were training their chatbot, Bard, on ChatGPT data. Okay, and now to be fair, a Google spokesman said that's completely wrong and they have not taken any data from OpenAI. They specified that none of the data came from ChatGPT or something called ShareGPT. But personally, I don't even see the controversy. If I was Google, I think that's a data source. Why not use it? One of many that they have access to. I mean, I would bet money with China trying to catch up to the United States that Ernie and stuff happening at Alibaba and Tencent with chatbots is absolutely taking every bit of data they can from it. And probably same with like Facebook and Nvidia and everybody. It's an API anybody could use to pull out data. And I know a lot of smaller projects are doing it. So I think Google should just fess up to it. If they're not using it, it's probably not smart. It was bound to happen. <laughs> ChatGPT ads. The shift from search queries to signals in advertising. As Google's business approaches its 23rd year, the landscape for advertising is about to change drastically. With the rise of AI-powered search, it's not about keywords and queries anymore, it's about signals. Because a useful ranked list of blue links like Google gives you is going to be replaced by a chat box. But also it's a paradigm for how do you slip an advertisement into a natural language conversation. Because the way that the advertisements are gonna slip in are just gonna feel so natural. They're really gonna be under our radar. It'll feel like a little nudge to like check out a restaurant or buy a product and it'll come in such a natural language way that I don't think we're gonna feel like it's an advertisement. An AI-powered search from an advertiser's point of view will probably feel a bit more like brand awareness because you won't be targeting like a certain keyword or a certain query, but instead you're gonna be thinking about a signal, like a buy signal or a trend signal, and if you wanna hop on that or not. And as artificial intelligence expands its touch point, so imagine like ChatGPT plugins that are now in your like refrigerator and your electronic shoes and like whatever other things, your vacuum, now they can actually target the way that those things are interacting with you, so they're new touch points, which will have their own sets of signals to decide on. The $2 billion question. Who benefits from AI-powered advertising? So who do you think should pay up in the future if something like ChatGPT recommends a product and that person buys it? That question's still up in the air. But if AI-powered search can even capture 1% of the advertising market, that's $2 billion in profit. But there's a lot of discussion about what does that mean for the publishers who create the original content that the actual chatbot was trained on, or that it references, or that it takes similar prompts from. Like if Bing AI actually presents a product and sells it because they took it from somewhere else, should they be paying? Or should that company be paying Bing so that they get a sale? I don't know. But to address these concerns, Microsoft started a new program. It's called the Microsoft Start Publishers Program, which proposes a revenue split with publishers when their content is presented in a Bing AI chat. But it brings up another question because even if they're sold on a product, should Bing chat actually say, here's a link, now go buy it? Or would it make a lot of sense if Microsoft starts keeping people's credit cards and just buying it through the chatbot and the chatbot goes out and does all of the buying on the website. And if you let that get out of hand, you know that Microsoft will just one day replace the company that's like doing the fulfillment because they control the users, they control the credit cards, and they can just fix that last part and get even more revenue. <laughs> Write like a pro because now Google AI is inside of Gmail and Docs. Google has started testing generative AI inside of Gmail and Docs with a small test group in the US. In Gmail, the AI can help draft various types of messages. So from birthday invitations to job cover letters, they even included the whimsical I'm feeling lucky button. Now in Google Docs, the generative AI can help you reformat all those words that you'd like smashed out. Make it more funny, make it more concise, just simplify it down, throw in a little bit of humor, turn it into a rhyme you know, stuff like that. So for those that have access, which is not me, but they are giving feedback to Google on their experience. And when Google determines that it's ready for prime time, should roll out to all of us. Bloomberg, 
GPT is here, the ultimate tool for financial professionals. So Bloomberg recently announced the development of Bloomberg GPT, a large scale generative model specifically designed for the financial industry. So this language model will help with various financial tasks, but it's using language to do it. So tasks like sentiment analysis, news aggregation, and question answering. But the model is interesting because it's connected so much financial data to news and other sources like that in the past that the model it was trained on was a fairly different data source than you would get from someplace like OpenAI or Google's Bard. Now, Bloomberg terminals are special little computers that people use to connect to the financial markets. And that data, of course, has been stored by Bloomberg. So they were able to use that to train this model in a way that nobody else could. It's considered to be the largest domain-specific data set that's ever been built into a large language model. And the result is a model that should outperform anything else on the market when it comes to financial tasks. The AI paradox, which is both saving and destroying our planet. So Stanford has just released a new index on artificial intelligence in 2023, and it is 385 pages. Here's some key takeaways. The commercial AI industry has raced above academia, with 32 significant industry-produced machine learning models in 2022 compared to just three from academia. AI's year-over-year -year quantitative results from these big models is actually starting to become mute. And there are better benchmarking systems now for comparing models to one another. Another. AI is having an impact on the environment, both positive and negative. For example, some projects are creating a ton of carbon when they train these high-end models, but other AI systems are helping lower the carbon footprint because they're optimizing systems. And AI is also accelerating scientific progress. Too many to list, but like hydrogen fuel or discovering new antibodies, protein folding, all of that stuff. And there's a rapid rise in AI misuse. Examples are some of the deep fake videos that we've seen of like the Ukrainian president and the use of call monitoring technology in US prisons. This highlights the growing use, but still lack of awareness with some of these tools. Global AI views, China's love for AI versus America's skepticism. So Stanford researchers have now measured how people feel about AI all across the world. 78% of Chinese respondents said that AI poses more benefits than there are drawbacks. Other optimistic countries were Saudi Arabia and India, both above 70%. However, only 35% of Americans, not even close to half of us, think that AI poses more risks than benefits, which I personally just did not expect. I mean, obviously I live in a little bubble of internet voices that always talk about AI, but there was just a disconnect for me. I know that when DeepMind beat the world's best Go player, Chinese state media ran that across the whole country, so maybe that got them really excited. Or maybe in the US it's because the social media platforms are so divisive that people have learned to just not trust Google and Facebook and all that stuff. I don't know, but if you have a theory or you can tell me what I'm missing, drop it in the comments below. 